Hi, this is linear algebra 1.9, the matrix of a linear transform. What we're going to do is, well, first of all, previous sections, you should have created a picture on Excel and manipulated in many ways with a transformational matrix. In the book, section 1.9 has an outline of the various transformations, but try to experience them with your spreadsheet as well. The one video that you did and got your spreadsheet going. Three main ideas in this uh, section. I want you to make a matrix that will transform points, and also we need to learn about the foundational matrices, mat uh, vectors E1, E2, all the way up to En. Those are just the columns of your identity matrix, one-to-one -one and mapping onto Rm. Those are the three things we're going to do. So let's start off with an example. They ask about this standard matrix. The standard matrix is the matrix that's going to uh, rotate us around or whatever, manipulate us however we want to do that. And so we want to try to create that. So let's look at example number one. Find the standard matrix that will transform 1, 0 to 5, 0, and 0, 1 to 0, 5 using a matrix. Now if you notice, we just magnified each one of these by 5. So we're going to be expanding that. So if we want to write a matrix for this, let's draw a picture first. So here are the basic two points that I do have. 1, 0, and then I also have 0, 1. I want to take this 1, 0, and I want to map it out to a 0, 5. So how am I going to do that? Well, let's draw it first. And so this expanded my 1, 0 out to 5 in the x direction, and then the 0, 1 out in the y direction. Now what if I have a point in here someplace? What is that going to do to it? Well, it's going to expand it out. So we want the, the matrix that will create this. Well, the first thing that we need are, we're starting with 1, 0 written in vector form, is like this, and then we're going to map that over to 5, 0. And then we're also going to start off with 0, 1, and we're going to map that one over to 0, 5. Okay, so what matrix will help us do this? Well, my transformational matrix will just be this in the first column and this in the second column. So I'm going to end up with 5, 0 like this, and then 0, 5. So this becomes our standard matrix. The standard matrix is what will transform us. Now some other things that you need to know. I do have these vectors. E1 is the point or the vector 1, 0. E2 would be the vector 0, 1. That's where we're starting from, our two points. Where do we map them to? Well, wherever we map these two points to is going to be pieces of my transformational matrix that I do have, which in this case was the 5, 0, and 0, 5. That's all you have to do to build these. There's other ways to do it too, but I like this way a lot. So part B now says, use this matrix to transform the point 2, negative 1. Plot the result. So I have the graph down here. 2, negative 1 is here. Where is our new point? So I'm going to take my matrix A, which would be 5, 0, 0, 5, and I'm going to multiply it by the vector 2, negative 1. And when I multiply this, now figure out the dimensions here. This is a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 1. And when I multiply those two, I'm going to end up with a 2 by 1. So same kind of thing. So this is going to be 5 times 2 plus 0 times negative 1 for the top term. And then down below, I'm taking these two values, multiplying by those two respectively. So it's 0 times 2 plus 5 times negative 1. My new point now is going to be 10, negative 5. Now, you probably thought, well, I don't have to do that with matrices. Well, but it, this is foundational, so this really helps us. So if we plot this point, it obviously magnifies it out to this point right here. Okay? Now, if you build a little rectangle around this point, what I'm doing is I'm going to magnify that rectangle. So if you did your cartoon character, it's going to make your cartoon character bigger because I am expanding it. And so I took that gray rectangle, I hope you can see that, and turned it into the purple rectangle by stretching it out. Now I, I multiplied that by a factor of 5. What happened to the area of this gray as compared to this full purple? Is it 5 times as big? I don't think so. Try multiplying and see what happens. Example number 2. We want to go ahead and find 
the standard matrix that will rotate the point 1, 0 and 0, 1 by theta. So now this is going to be a little bit different, but we are taking those same two points, which is part of the identity matrix. So this is my identity matrix for uh, R2. And then I'm going to have two columns, this column and this column, and those would be E1 and E2 respectively. But I want to do a transform on this. So when I do a transform on this, I'm going to get T of E1, comma, T of E2. Sorry, no comma. And that would be my rotational matrix that I'm going to end up with, which is my matrix A. Okay, so that's what we're going to end up with. So I have my points, 1, 0, and then I also have 0, 1. Those are my two points that I'm going to rotate then. So let's take the first one and say that we rotate it by some angle in here, theta. Can't write it in there because it's too small. But then that would be my new point. And what would be the coordinates of that point? Well, if we're on the unit circle, which we are because we're doing the point 1, 0, we're going to end up with the cosine theta comma sine of theta. That's my new point. So what am I mapping 1, 0, 2? This right here is mapping to something new. Well, what is that something new? Well, it's going to be the cosine of theta, sine of theta. So that's where we get this for our transformational matrix. Then if I take this one over here and I rotate it over, this would be 0, 1 moving on over this. Notice I have similar triangles here. And so this one will just be the, I can't write it in there. This is going to be the opposite of the sine of theta, comma, cosine theta, because I switch both of those around because I'm now up here rather than being over here. Okay, so that's what the new values are going to be. So I'm going to put them in here. So therefore, this is my matrix A that will transform things. And so I can take A times any vector that's in R2 and go ahead and transform it back into R2. Okay, so now we got a challenge. What we want to do is go ahead and find the standard matrix of this transformation that goes from R2 to R2 that will rotate points by pi over 4. So let's do that part first. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this point, 1, 0, and I'm going to rotate it by that pi over 4. What becomes my new coordinates there. Square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So that's what's going to happen when I rotate by pi over 4. What then happens to my 0, 1 if I move it by pi over 4 over to there? Well, my 0, 1 gets mapped into, that would be negative square root of 2 over 2 and then square root of 2 over 2. My x coordinate is negative and my y coordinate is positive. So that's one way to do my transformational matrix. How do you map 1, 0, and how do you map 0, 1 in R2? That's going to tell you what's going to end up being our transformational matrix. Now, the other way to do it is to go ahead. You know this fact right here is just go ahead and plug in the pi over 4 into each one of those pieces. When I do that, I'm going to get this matrix here, which you, I hope you can identify as the same as that one there. So this is how you're going to build your transformational matrices that will rotate and do different things for us. So all I've done so far is I rotated by pi over 4, so now I want to reflect it over the y-axis. Well, we, we can do this a couple ways. One, you can kind of brain it, which is hard to do. The other way is to do it in a more formal way. We know that this was our first operation that we did do there. So what we want to do is to take the first one here, and then you're going to take the second one. So when I say first and second, I mean first is the rotation, and second is the reflection. So you, if you put this first, if I reflect over the y-axis, that means that I want to, I want to change my 1, 0 to negative 1, 0. So this is going to map my x-coordinates, and then the y-coordinates I want to stay the same. So if I set this up like this, and then I can go ahead and multiply this, when I multiply this, it's really you're just going to change my top two entries there. So it's going to change this to negative cosine of pi over 4, and then this one to sine of pi over 4, and then my bottom ones, 
stay the same sign. And so that would be the resulting matrix that I am trying to find under these, both of these two conditions. So on my Scooby-Doo here, this is the matrix that I just wanted. So I'm going to rotate this thing by pi over 4, 45 degrees. And when I do that, you can tell that his nose would be kind of like this. And then his ears, I'm not going to do this very well. That's one ear. There's the other ear, kind of. And so with this, it's going to then rotate, I'm sorry, reflect over the y-axis. And so that's what it did as well. Okay, so that did both operations in one matrix. So that's how you can use your spreadsheet to see what's going on with these pictures. Kind of fun. So then theorem number 10 kind of says what we, what we just got done with. They say that to find A, all we're going to do is make all these columns are the transformations of each one of these uh, vectors that are like 1, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 0. So whichever column you're in, it's then going to uh, dictate where the 1 falls. And this should be an N and not a, a 1 there so that this would be your last column, and so then the one would be in the very last entry. So what I'm saying is that it's not necessarily R2, it could be R3. If it's R3, they're going to transform this here. Oh, that's wrong. There you go. So they're going to take that identity matrix, and they're going to transform that. R4, so on. We'll just keep on expanding those dimensions. But then the T is the transformation that, we do, that does take place. And this is a nice side note about linear transformation and matrix transformations and how we discuss them. So what if I want to shear this now? For example, number three, it says make a matrix that will shear the points in the x direction. So that means that I want to keep this bottom portion here fixed. And then I'm going to take this top and move it all across uh, somehow. And it will still be a parallelogram, but not a square anymore. No right corners anymore. So I'm going to take this top red line that I just drew, and I want to move it over to the right. So there I moved it. How much did I move it by? Well, let's call it K. So this value right here is that I pushed it over by K. And now I'm going to get a new figure, which is called a sheared figure here. And with that, I'm going to get a parallelogram, as I, I told you. And so this is what we call shearing. So what did we do to the... Uh, coordinates 0, 1, and what did we do to the coordinates? I say it backwards all the time, sorry. 1, 0, and 0, 1. Well, 1, 0 stays itself. That did not move. And what happened, though, to this point right here? It started at 0, 1, and then went to K1. So now I can easily build my matrix that will work with this. So this would be 1, 0, and then this would be K1. So however far over you want to move that top piece, you would put in that value of k, assuming that that's on the, the horizontal line y equal to 1. Now the example that I just gave you in that picture would be k is equal to 0. But you also could have k is less than 0, and if that was the case, then you would shear it back this way. All right? Okay. Oh, I did that totally wrong. Sorry. I did it like this. There you go. Now in the y direction, I'm going to take this red line and move it. And I'm going to do a shear in the y direction. This one is a negative k that we're doing it for. So now I'm shearing it with this value. So what am I mapping? You try it. See if you can write the matrix for this. So if you, well, hopefully you pause that, but you should get this one and this one. So we put this into an A. And we're going to get 1k for the first column. And then we're going to get 0, 1 for the second column so that this would be my shearing in the y direction. If it's going down, k is negative. If it's going up, k is positive. But I did mark this point wrong. It should be this point. That is my new 1k. So then in your book, here's some common transformation matrix matrices, and they tell you where the point 0, 1, and 1, 0 go. And then here's your shear that we do have, and then here are projections. Projections just kind of flatten it out onto on axes, or you could take a three-dimensional and put it onto a two-dimensional uh, plane.
if you wanted to. Okay, here's a couple of tricky subjects, but we have two things. One that we're going to talk about is onto. So here's a picture that's giving you onto it. So if I take some domain Rn and I move it over to Rm, and for instance, maybe this is a plane, this could be in different dimensions, but this might be a plane, and it only maps to a plane even though I'm in R3. If that happens, then I'm not onto. I have not taken up all of this space that I'm mapping over to. So somehow, some way, all of these points have to map into everything else that we do have in our new space. And so over here, it does say, okay, all this stuff does go to all of this stuff, which is RM, and so this is onto. This one is a case where we're not onto. And then the other definition is one-to-one. -one. So if we have a mapping from RN to RM, this is said to be one-to-one -one if each B in RM is the image of at most one X in RN. So when I do my mapping from one domain to the other, it's not like I'm having all of these points going to a single point. I only can have one of these points go to a single point over here. That's what one-to-one -one means. So let's do it through this example here. So if I have example number four, and I want to look at T, and this is my transformational matrix, A, standard matrix, does T map R4 in, onto R3? Does it take up the whole space? When they ask these things, then I'm talking about AX is equal to B. Can I get every B that's in there? Well, if you look right now, this is a 3 by 4. And this is not augmented. So we don't have this equal to anything, but you could have it equal to a bunch of Bs. And the question is, is can I cover all Bs that I do have in this new space? Well, if you look at the pivots, well, how many pivots do I have? Well, I do have three pivots. And so I'm going to have, in a 3 by 4, so I'm going to have a, a free variable. Since I have a free variable, yes, we're going to be able to cover all these Bs. We can solve for any B that we want. And then we can plug them in, so we're going to cover all of those. Now the question is, is this also one-to-one? -one? So we want to answer the question, are we going to be independent? If we're independent, then we are going to have a one-to-one -one mapping for this matrix. So since we have a free variable, we know that A is dependent, so it's not a one-to-one -one mapping. We don't have that. And this is the AX is equal to zero uh, setup that we have and so you could do reduce row echelon form if you wanted to try to solve that out too if you needed to do more but in this case we don't need to so let's finish up with this theorem 12 so let's see if t is a mapping from r n to r m be a linear transform and let a be the standard matrix for t then t maps r n onto r m if and only if the columns of a span r m and up here we said yes, because we do have a free variable and that's going to help us uh, be on to. And then one to one, T is one to one, if and only if the columns of A are linearly independent. So that's what you have to check for. And just a little reminder that if you're going from R4 onto R3 transformation, you do need a three by four. This is your is your N, and then this one here is your M. So it's in reverse, that's why you're getting the three by four. So when we go multiply by four digits, one, two, three, four, or a vector of uh, column of length four, then we can multiply this because we have to multiply all these terms going across by all these going down, that does work. Okay, so then that's why those numbers are reversed if you didn't pick that up before. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry for the little bit of length, but I think that this is really kind of fun, but it's just how do you navigate all these transformations and write these matrices, and I sure do hope that this helped. Thanks. Have a great day.